So the theme, the theme that we came, that came out of conversations in the community this year was really one that we simply called intersections. That most of us have multiple dimensions to our lives. Intersections, age, gender, sexual orientation, identity, country of origin, ability, disability, how you feel, self confidence body shapes, income, uh, where you live, how you're perceived, how long you've lived in this country, the conditions in which you came here, your own narrative, your faith, uh, all of those things are complex, and most of us live at many intersections in our life, and sometimes we feel marginalized even within one community or another. My name is Barbara Center, and um, I identify as a Jewish lesbian. And in the 50s and 60s, there was no language for being gay or lesbian. I knew from very young that um, I loved women. There wasn't a sexual component to it. And I was, I would say, confused about my own sexuality, really not really in touch with it. And more or less, I, I did what was expected. You know, I dated guys and I got married and had children, and that was, that was it. And um, um, I was pretty late coming to consciousness. <laughs> I mean, if you look at what happened to Hillary Clinton, oh, God. was horrific. Yeah. If you look at what's being said about Theresa May, who probably would not, Theresa May, the Premier, oh, yes, the Prime Minister, yeah. who, who may not have been the person I vote for, matter of fact, probably not, but the horrendous misogyny that she is being subjected to in social media. We have never once re-elected a woman Prime Minister or female. Yeah. The one in Ontario happens to be an out lesbian who has a story similar to some of the stories we heard earlier, who got married, who came out late in life, who lived in that same social context or you just adapted because it was convention. I think that there's misogyny, and I think it's as bad as homophobia. I have a feeling that the women that is 51% of the population are all saying they could vote for her. They haven't held her up, and she's kind of fallen by the wayside as a result. It's too bad, but 51% of us are not supporting her because she's not been what we want from a woman, what we want from her, you know. I don't think she's listening either, you know, so that makes a difference, but it's, it's sad. I was six years old. Um, my father um, was a technologist, so he came a year ahead of us. We were in a small town in Quebec, Shawinigan, and Grandmer, little places. Um, so it was a very small Anglo community, and they didn't like us. And um, the French people thought we were English, so they didn't like us. <laughs> um, so, you know, it was a rejection all the way around, really. Um, but I thought that was normal, <laughs> you know. Um, and, um, yeah, so that's that. I mean, I understand why the people felt the way they did. I come from a family of six, so I helped my single mother raise six of my siblings. And uh, from that sixth variation, I am the oldest, so I'm 24. The youngest is nine. I have an 11-year-old trans brother now, and a queer sister who's 14. And this probably would not have been the case if I wasn't the person who was like, this isn't going to happen today. I'm not going to exist for your existence. It's bigger than just these individual courageous steps that you all have taken. It, and you've taken two, right? Standing, standing in your difference, even within your family. You tell your parents, please. You know, and uh, <laughs> but what your standing in your difference allows for for other folk who are watching you, right? Like you don't. We never know who's like watching us, and I think that's what's crazy too. Very straight white male, and I've had all the trouble. I have yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a similar story to Angus. I grew up in a rural place. Uh, and I would say my main intersection was the intersection between the people who surrounded me, my friends, extended family, people who I just kind of overheard in the streets, and then a few progressive women who really guided me in the way I thought about the world. I had my mother, I had my grandmother, I had my stepmother. 
uh, I wanted to thankfully instill upon me some kind of sense of uh, openness, some kind of sense of compassion for people. That kind of led me to uh, pretty much where I am today. I've, uh, I, I really took those lessons to heart and I really wanted to kind of continue those teachings. What's your background? And my question is, what is Canadian now? Because everyone's, it's so diverse, so <laughs> there isn't really a one particular person that would be considered Canadian.